You know, I've spoken on numerous occasions about how much I enjoy operating under silicone oil. This is a patient with a recurrent detachment um, that had some perfluoron left in the eye, also had silicone oil in the eye. Uh, this patient wasn't operated on in our practice, uh, but the patient came to see us for a second opinion, and I had the opportunity to work on their, on their retina. We can see here there's some subretinal blood already present. I usually use a two-port approach when I think I'm going to keep the silicone oil in the eye. In this case, I tried to peel the PVR and unfortunately just really wasn't having luck with it. So very early on, I, I decided to go to a retinectomy. And when making a retinectomy under oil, you want to be very generous with the size, as with every retinectomy. The second thing is, is definitely infuse oil into the eye and get your pressure up to uh, about 45 or 50. That prevents any bleeding. You will have to go back as we are right now and refill with oil as you're doing more and more of the retinectomy. And the real key is, is to keep your cutter port underneath the retina as much as you can and just come up and barely nick the retina to make your retinectomy and move on. Um, you don't want to spend a lot of time in the oil or your cutter will, will get occluded. Here you can see I'm utilizing the soft tip to just aspirate, kind of drag that retina out and try to straighten it out a little bit more. And then I use the endo laser on continuous. Many times I'll retinectomize further away than where my diathermy is and I'll laser that retina. Uh, I went ahead, this patient had a small suprachoroidal hemorrhage, and I went ahead and lasered around that. And then we're able to get out that bubble of PFO that was left behind, and then fill the eye up with silicone oil. And the patient remained attached with that inferior retinectomy. Always suture your sclerotomies when you're using oil. Thanks for watching.